Let's talk about five most important and exciting things that happened to electric cars in 2021, which will not only shape the 2022, but probably the next few years of the electric car adoption. But before you continue watching though, let me know in the comment section which piece of the electric car news was the most important to you last year. And we're gonna start right now. Welcome to E4 Electric. Happy New Year. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel because unlike your new gym membership, this subscription is something that you may actually use. So don't forget to click on that subscribe button and the bell notification icon so you don't miss anything moving forward. 2021 was the year I've been waiting for for a long time and not just because I got my new hair transplants. Hmm? but also because electric cars have finally arrived and the electric car adoption is on its way. Out of hundreds of different news stories that I have covered in 2021, these are the five most important news that happened to electric cars in no particular order. Let's start with the company. That's the reason why we're all here. Tesla, the reason why we're even talking about electric cars in 2022. The EV1, the Nissan Leaf, the i3, none of those cars were going to go far on their own and pun intended, until Tesla came along. Tesla was a proof of concept that an automaker can make a great electric car that is not just as good as a gas car, but even better. And people don't really like new things unless they're better than what they had before. That's how I ended up with my hair transplants. But the biggest argument against it has always been the fact that making a great electric car came at a big financial loss. And when Tesla did make a little bit of a profit, it was short-lived. But this year, this year the world found out that you can make great electric cars and make tons of money doing it. In January, Tesla has announced that they had their first profitable year. And a few months later, Tesla has become the very first trillion dollar automaker joining a pretty exclusive club of trillion dollar companies like Google, Apple, Microsoft, and other giants. What pushed Tesla's stock price, which essentially determines the value of the company into the milestone, was the deal with Hertz to deliver 100,000 Model 3 sedans to the car rental company. Hertz even hired Tom Brady to star in their Tesla campaign because American men don't pay attention to anything unless there is either a football in front of them or a pretty girl. And after spending all this money on 100,000 Teslas, Apparently Hertz only had enough money left for the whole football thing. On this show, we can't afford either. So that's why you're stuck with me and my hair. Now that Hertz deal in its own was a huge step for electric cars because nothing makes people fall in love with electric cars than, well, driving them. So Hertz will become the biggest ambassador for Tesla and electric cars by providing tons and tons of essentially test drives. But back to Tesla's $1 trillion valuation. Like I mentioned before, it comes from its stock price. And as much as I'd be the first one to tell you how stock market has very little to do with reality, it is still the undisputed fact that investors now believe that the future of automaking is with a brand that makes nothing but electric cars and working on self-driving technology for them. That's not only good for Tesla, that's good for the cause of the entire electric car revolution. Tesla's $1 trillion valuation tells everyone that the future is electric. Let's move on to the next most important news story of 2021, but my Sunday show wouldn't be the same without hearing from the Forbes contributor and the host of the State of Charge YouTube channel, Tom Malogny. So I'm going to yield the floor to him and let him share with us what he thought was the biggest news of the year. But before that, a quick reminder that this video is brought to you by Flow. If you're looking for one of the most elegant designs for your home charger, the Flow Home X5 was made for you, featuring beautiful, sturdy, and 100% aluminum casing. Get your exclusive $150 discount in the description of this video. And by Neo Charge, guess what? The 220 outlet that powers your dryer can now be split to also power your electric car with the help of the smart splitter from Neo Charge, which will automatically switch back to your dryer while you're doing laundry. Get your exclusive discount in the description of this video. All right, Tom, so first, Happy New Year. Thank you for being such a big part of this channel for yet another year. So from the bottom of my heart, and I think I speak for a lot of my audience, thank you and uh, Happy New Year, my friend. Happy New Year to you, Alex. It's been great uh, being a guest here every week. I really 
enjoy it. And I love uh, interacting with the E4Electra community. All right. Well, listen, let's jump right into it. Tell me, what do you think was either the biggest or one of the biggest news for the electric car community in 2021? Right. So a lot happened. I mean, it, it, it's hard to pick exactly what is the biggest news, but you know me, I'm a charging geek. And one of the things that really seemed to stand out for me is how in 2021, we got some cars that now have serious charging speeds. Now, Tesla's always been great with charging. I almost have to put them to the side for a minute. But other auto manufacturers like Lucid Air, uh, Hyundai Ionic 5, the Kia EV6, uh, those vehicles charge from 10% to 80% in 18 minutes. The Lucid Air can replenish 200 miles of driving range in only 12 minutes of charging. I mean, you know, charging speed is really as important as the driving range of an EV. You could actually get away with less driving range if your vehicle has such robust, fast charging capabilities, because you could take long trips as long as the chargers are there and just quickly replenish, make 15, 20 minute stops, and you add another few hundred miles of range. So that really stood out to me in 2021 that some of the OEMs are really taking fast charging seriously. And that's exciting uh, because that's really going to enable long distance driving. Now, and I know this has been pretty much one of the last problems to solve before we can really, you know, sell us to the, you know, the majority of the people. But when do you think we will get to the point where electric cars can be recharged? And I mean, 100%, zero to 100, you know, as fast, if not faster uh, as gas cars. That's not going to happen, zero to 100. Uh, uh, I just, you know, um, because of physics and chemistry, the way the batteries work, Alex, you, you might be able to get, you know, 0% uh, to 80% in, in almost as fast as refueling gas cars. But that 80 to 100%, you just can't cram the electrons into the pack that quickly once the state of charge rises. So that the goal isn't zero to 100% to, to equal gas. I think the goal is from a very low state of charge to say 80% in, in close to as fast as you could refuel uh, a, a liquid fuel vehicle. It's, you still, it's still hard to beat refueling gasoline, Alex, time-wise. But don't forget, you, don't, you always have to go to a gas station. You don't always have to go to a, a charging station, a DC fast charger. When you live in an, with an electric vehicle, most people are only going to do that on long distance traveling. Well, that begs the question, you know, I mean, should people take a second look at battery swap? Because that's pretty much the only way to go zero to 100 in three minutes. And right now, only, as you know, NEO does that. Do you think it's worth the second look? So, yeah, you're, you're right that, you know, if if your goal is zero to 100 percent in three to five minutes, that would be a way to do it. I, I don't know if that's necessarily my goal with electric vehicles. And we've seen it works in China. The battery swap system that, that NEO has, uh, at least so far, is works very well in China. I don't know if it's going to translate well to Europe and the U.S. That's yet to be determined. I'm not sure how people would feel about not keeping their battery pack. That once you start a battery swap system, you know, you, you once you make that first swap of your battery pack, you never get it back again. And a lot of people don't feel comfortable about that, saying, well, I take care of my battery and I'm getting this battery swap that's that's been abused and degraded. Of course, you could always just go get another one. But, you know, I think the, the, the mental uh, uh, hurdle of accepting that is going to be different with Europeans and Americans than it is with uh, Chinese culture. Thank you once again to Tom for being such a huge part of this channel in 2021. Don't forget he's got his own. So subscribe to that channel as well, because once again, it will probably outlast your gym membership that we were talking about earlier. I put a link to it in the description of this video. All right, the next big thing that happened last year didn't really happen as a big headline. It kind of snuck up on us. And it's the fact that not only Chinese EV makers had a great year, but they have also started expanding into Europe for the first time. And it seems that expansion into North America is likely as well. Neo and Xpeng have just announced that they both have delivered close to 100,000 EVs each in 2021. 
that's not a small number. Both NIO and Xpeng, along with BYD, a more established car maker, have all started selling their cars in Norway with big plans to expand to the rest of Europe. And NIO has just created several job postings on LinkedIn looking for people who would only be needed if they were planning to expand to the United States. Our regular guest Sandy Monroe has told us multiple times, and I can't agree more, that the Chinese electric cars can take over the world, much like Japanese cars did three decades ago. These are well-made cars with the latest technology that are priced extremely competitively. And those who think that these are the cheap Chinese crap are in for a big surprise, though I do find it funny that when people say that in the comment section, they usually type those in uh, using their made in China phones while wearing their made in China clothes. Both uh, Sandy and I have been to China and saw that car manufacturing there is top notch and in many cases these cars are made just as well as they would be in Europe. Xpeng has one of the best self-driving technologies, easily comparable to Tesla's full self-driving and NIO is the only car company in the world that can have their cars go from 0% battery charge to 100% in just three minutes with their ever-growing network of battery swap stations. Now, before Chinese cars take over the world, here in the United States, we love our trucks. We love buying them, we love lifting them while never using them for the purposes they were actually made for. So it's no surprise that American truck drivers are the least interested in our cheesy electric cars or so we thought. The all-electric Ford F-150 was unveiled last year and to most people's surprise, it was a huge hit. As a matter of fact, after receiving over 200,000 reservations, which essentially made it sold out for three years ahead, Ford had to stop taking these reservations, at least for now. Now, when the all-electric version of the most popular best-selling pickup truck in America sells out like that, it is a great indication that even the least friendly customers to the electric car revolution are starting to turn. And for the first time, with an exception of the Chinese markets, all electric pickup trucks have started deliveries with the Rivian R1T and GM's Hummer EV making their ways to their first customers' hands and paving the way for the F-150 Lightning deliveries next year. And the last but not least, the most important news slash thing that happened to electric cars in 2021 was that Tesla is no longer the only best choice for those who are shopping for electric cars. As I mentioned in the beginning of the video, Tesla is pretty much solely responsible for electric cars becoming a thing. But the problem was that electric cars have been synonymous with Tesla for many, many years. If you were thinking an electric car, you were thinking Tesla. Tesla had the best range, the best charging times, the best and only charging network. I can go on and on and on. But the last year, all of that has changed. The longest range crown now belongs to the Lucid Air. The fastest charge time is a close call between the Lucid Air, but also the Hyundai Ioniq 5 and the Kia EV6. Electrify America and other charging networks like Ionity have the highest power output at 350 kilowatts and have now grown to be big enough to provide non-Tesla EVs with an ability to travel long distance in most common areas. Now, this is not a knock on Tesla. Tesla is still the leader in the electric car revolution, but this channel is not about one brand or brands in general. This channel is about us, the consumers, and what's good for consumers is the competition and a good number of choices. It's even good for Tesla customers because the competition makes Tesla better too. If you haven't already, let me know in the comment section what was the most important thing that you thought happened to electric cars in 2021. I'm looking forward to all of your comments. Other than that, see you guys next time and remember to stay charged.